Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by Eric Sell and also available as a podcast. I'm Rick Kessler. He's Sherman Goldenberg, and we're with RV Business. And joining the two of us today are a couple of very familiar faces, and that would be Daryl Sear and Ryan Zalarek from the RVMH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. It's our pleasure. Thanks for having us, Rick. Sure. Well, let's start with the most recent news of the day, and that was uh, today's posting that the RV uh, supplier show that takes place during the Elkhart Open House, you guys are just about sold that sucker out already. Well, I've, I've got the stats on it. Uh, we are uh, 90% sold out of that 90%, 40% of them have already paid, 50% of them are reserved, and there's only 10% available uh for sale right now in march <laughs> in early march yeah <laughs> oh that's amazing and it just continues to gain ground doesn't it yes and what's interesting is uh uh we've we've had uh, two or three suppliers that have shown in the past that are not going to show in the future but i've had eight new suppliers that have stepped up and said hey we want to be in the show and uh, and they now step up and say we want to be in the show, but they pay up front as well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, things are moving rapidly in the right direction. And, and Daryl will and Ryan will that be the same situation as as uh, last year's, where you're going to have both inside and outside display space? Uh, yes, right right now of the uh, I, I I wrote this down so I wouldn't wouldn't forget it. Uh, inside booths will be 210. Uh, that, that'll be inside and outside is 56 booths and uh, right now there's 19 open on the outside and there's 13 open on the inside but wow. it uh, the, the big difference is we run an aisle now right down the middle north and south and uh, we needed to do that to, um, to satisfy the fire marshal but as I did the layout it, it really gives the supplier a lot more in booth space because with going down the middle, you've got on, you know, you, you've got another dozen or so in booths available, and so it, it'll flow a lot better uh, than it did last year. Okay, not not really since the Louisville show, as far as I'm con concerned, have we had a a strong, stable supplier uh, show, right? Right. One of the, the uh, one of the things you did last year too was you actually uh, carved out space from the RV museum exhibit to make room for that. What's the update on that? Because I know you had some pretty good plans going on. Well, it's uh, uh, we're doing the same thing this year, and uh, but we're going to empty the entire uh, space. Uh, all of the RVs will, will be out of there. So the whole space is available now for suppliers. And that was in the count that I gave you. Wow. Uh, but hopefully, uh, that's another thing we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, we may have a, a, a much bigger space available as well. But um, right go now... Ahead. Go ahead with that. You want me to go ahead with it? Well, sure. uh, the good news is... Uh, the uh, uh, executive committee met uh, within the last few days and um, went over plan A, B, and C. They approved plan B, which is the erection of the entire outside of the new building, uh, completed, partially done inside, where we would, from a safety point of view, we would have the sprinkler system in, we would have lights in, and we would have electric in. And we can do this based on our uh, positive case flow for this year and not go in debt. And uh, they're pretty adamant about not going in debt. So uh, we can get this done. And uh, what we plan on doing, in fact, we're already organizing the uh, fundraising committee again. We've kind of been dormant. Uh, over the last few months, you know, we we, uh, we did put the floor in uh, to help Thor out last year, and uh, and so uh, now we're uh, now we're ready to uh, 
uh, put the footings in and start the erection of the building. And uh, the footings will be in before the end of March. And the first girders will be going up uh, in uh, early April. So we think by May, June, probably middle of June, uh, the bulk of the exterior of the building will be completed, but we would still have to get um, a permit uh, for occupancy, which would be a temporary permit to be able to do the, the supplier show. So right now, uh, the plan is um, to make sure that everybody has a space and, uh, you know, we don't have Murphy's Law move in and, <laughs> and cause a problem. So we're being very cautious there. I think uh, one of the things we want to do, uh, Ryan, you and I talked about this, is to um, uh, wait about three months and do an update. And I, I think uh, if we wait through March, April, May, uh, that we, we could, by the end of May, we should be able to give an update of, as exactly where we're at. Mm -hmm. This, this, uh, give me some geography. Where is this addition you're talking about on the compass? This is the Southeast corner, uh, based off the ground hall, grand hall, uh, in the gap that would make the building symmetric. And Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the square footage of this addition is equal to the existing display space that you already have. Is that right? Uh, it's so it's where actually, we're showing right now. Go ahead. Yeah, it's actually a little bit larger, Rick. Uh, it's 36,000 square feet. Uh, the other one is, uh, is about uh, two rooms that are about 17,000 square feet each. So we're a couple thousand square feet uh, larger uh, in that. And, and the floor is already there. Mm -hmm. uh, we we poured the floor um, uh, last summer before the open yes. house. So, so uh, as it relates to the supplier show, we currently use the Ingram Hall, and then obviously we empty the Founders Hall, um, which gives us about 34,000 square feet of indoor space. In the future, we would like to avoid emptying our museum and exposing units to the elements and and so forth. Um, so we'll lose that space, but we we will maintain the Ingram Hall. So 36,000 square feet with the new convention hall with 18,000 square feet in the Ingram Hall. We add about 152 booths. Nice, nice. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Now, this this conversation doesn't include the the uh, other building, uh, correct? The, you know. Orthwine Pavilion? The, the pavilion, thank you. No, no, the... No, because the Thor show is going on at the same time and Thor uses the pavilion. Oh, okay. So, so we, we don't have a, a, a choice to use that. that. That was in Thor's original agreement. So one of the nice things I liked about your um, the building that you're putting up, the expansion you're putting up right now is um, uh, both of you had told me privately that uh, it's going to be all the bells and whistles, the acoustics and, and uh, lighting and, and uh, everything's going to be I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be top notch. Well, we're 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 pretty sure that all of those bells and whistles won't be in there uh, <laughs> by this year's open house. But uh, uh, the good thing is, if the outside is completed, uh, then we can start to work the winter as as we get funds in. Uh, as you know, we um, uh, ten years ago we were. Uh, Five and a half million in debt and a negative net worth. Uh, today we're 21 million net worth and no debt. And our board is saying we must stay that way. So uh, hopefully uh, the committee will be successful in raising funds and we can keep right on building uh, once we get the exterior done. The total square footage uh, is becoming a, a regional uh, event center. Oh, for sure. We have uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what do we call the, uh, the the gentleman that's over by uh, Chubby Trout? What, uh, Ryan, you could take that in because they've been after us to uh, uh, to get that building built because a lot of folks. Come oh, you're talking about the Visitors Bureau. Right. The Visitors. Yeah. Center. We, we've had a lot of contact from the county, um, the Visitors Bureau, uh, more specifically. 
wondering when is this convention hall going to be built? When are we going to have this much indoor space? Because there's been a lot of um, talk about bringing things to Elkhart and currently there's no no place to host these types of functions and events that they're they're discussing but uh in their mind they're thinking fill hotels uh fill restaurants bring people into town um and then have a place that can host them and so there's a there's a number of events that we will be able to add as soon as this building is done and um a number of events that we currently do now uh such as this last weekend we had a comic con uh yeah. which drew in thousands of people they set a record for attendance this year by almost two and a half times wow. and they are just biting tooth and nail they're, they're ready for this new space to be built because uh, they think people will travel into Elkhart just to be there and uh, there's a there's a number of situations just like that that's going to require us to finish this building and it's exciting to be building something that's going to be used by the community uh, and is going to be good for the community and uh, so well, a good example of that that you're very close to is uh, the power breakfast. I was just going to I mean, mention that. Yeah, yeah, we had a thousand thirty last year, and and we were jammed into uh, uh, Ingram Hall. So, uh, uh, and I know you guys sell out in the first week, just about every every year, and so um, that's going to give you a, a a much larger. You could double what you do now. Yeah. And to your point earlier, Rick. Um, the goal is with this building is to we have convention hall in mind. We want to make sure it's acoustically treated. We want to make sure it has an adequate sound system, uh, an adequate video system so that when you put on events like the Power Breakfast, um, more in-house resources that make it more plug and play. Um, and that's something we're keeping in mind going forward. Very good. One more topic we're supposed to talk about according to my notes <laughs> uh, is uh, the induction uh, dinner. Um, tell us uh, about this year's plans. I'll let Ryan handle that. Yeah, so this year, obviously, um, we've had a couple of different uh, uh, scenarios with the induction dinner the past couple of years, mainly because of the pandemic. We've had the year where we did two classes in one year that was unique. And then we had the year that we had a 50th year anniversary which was unique. And uh, this year we've got another little um, niche. And that is uh, this year we're inducting a uh, RV uh, members group um, uh, ambassador, which is the Forrest and Jerry Bone and the ten, 10 Can Tourist Group. And so this year, what's gonna be unique is we're actually gonna be hosting a rally simultaneous with the in induction ceremony, which is gonna bring in a pretty significant influx of people um, where we're expecting somewhere in the ballpark of 600 or more people that are going to be there. Um, a large quantity of those people are going to be camping on site and, and uh, participating in this rally and then honoring the members or the, the people that started their, their membership group. And so um, we're definitely expecting this to be a pretty substantial induction dinner this year. And it's a great fundraiser for the Hall of Fame. And when it's heavily attended, it's it it feels significant for all of the inductees that are involved and we're really excited for this year. I had an opportunity to attend one of those uh, tin can, tin can tourist rallies um, some years ago. And that's where I actually met Forrest uh, there. Um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely, it's basically take your museum and put it out on the, uh, the campground rally sites and uh, people are extremely yep. nice and very happy to show off their, their vintage RV. It's going to be a special weekend, that's for sure. Well, I guess it it falls on a weekday, but even the weekend before is when the rally starts, and there's going to be a lot of buzz going on on our campus during that time. Very powerful report on all fronts, you guys. Um, very impressive. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. There is one thing I'd like to say about the dinner, and that is. Uh, that uh, we've already had people sign up online, okay. uh, take full tables and sponsorships and so forth. So if they just go to our website, uh, they can sign up right now, even if it's not until the, uh, this year it'll be as late as possible because it's always the third Monday now of August. And so that'll be the 21st. And so we have a lot of time, but uh, you know, if they want to be assured of a, of a table, then it's kind of first come first serve as far as how far up front you are. 
uh, <laughs> at, at the dinner. So uh, that is easy to do. August 21, you say? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, Rick, uh, we're home stretch here. Home stretch. Ryan, Daryl, thank you again for your time. Looking forward to the next time we catch up in person. Uh, who knows? It might be uh, a ribbon cutting. Who? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> we, we that would be delightful. Before. Well, thank both of you. We appreciate the opportunity to share with the uh, with the people who really, uh, uh, you know, it's it's owned by everybody in the two industries, and and it's here for the community and and just everybody to enjoy the museums and and everybody to take advantage of the uh, of the event center uh, for whatever event they want to hold. So uh, we're we're pleased to share that. Thank you, thank you very much.